I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and when someone asks you, would you like to spend a little time with the Moog 3P synthesizer, the answer is yes. So uh, I got a little time with this. Um, this is the 3P, which is the portable version covered in Tolex and has the front covers, unlike the 3C, which had a walnut cabinet. Um, this is a modern recreation of those 1967 synthesizers, uh, but they use the same uh, templates for both the front panels as well as the etchings for the circuit boards. Uh, so very exciting stuff. So we're going to go through it really quickly, and then with what time I have, I'm going to make as many different little songs as I can. Hope you enjoy it. So the best way to wrap your head around a Moog 3P is to see where the similarities are and, and where parts are duplicated. And the part that's duplicated the most on this are the oscillators. There are actually 10 oscillators, and there are three groups of three, and then a lone oscillator over there. So in the first group, you have a 901A, which is your oscillator controller. And that gets you like your main range for all three oscillators, and then a fine tuning of all three oscillators together. And then, if you use pulse width out on any of them, this adjusts the width of the pulse waveform. And then finally, these control inputs let you control the frequency of all three oscillators via the keyboard, uh, via a sequencer, via an LFO, or whatever you want, whatever voltage control you want to go in there. So, within each of these 901Bs, like I said, you have each of the octaves, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2, and then a fine tuning. And basically, that will let you either put all three of them in unison and then slightly detune them or get them in unison the best you can, or you could build a chord. But once you've made the sound that you want, then this fine tuning will move all three of them together. And like I said, each one of them has four wave shapes out, and they all work simultaneously. So you have sawtooth, sine wave, pulse, and triangle wave. And that whole section here is duplicated here, and here, and here. And then the last one, it's a 901 without a letter on it. And basically, it's unique in that you have four outputs for the four wave shapes, but then you also have four outputs with an independent volume for each of them. Uh, that's handy if you're trying to get a, a certain sound uh, with balancing the different waves, or if this thing is in a low frequency, uh, so you're doing, using it as an LFO, this will do the LFO depth to filter modulation or pitch modulation, things like that. And it's also handy for when you're trying to do FM and, and creating timbres that way. And then below the oscillators, you have four CP3 mixers. And they're coveted because of the way that they add girth to a sound as you overdrive them slightly. There are four inputs on each, each with their own level. Then you have a master level, you have a click filter, uh, you have a molt down here, and then you have two outputs that are regular and two outputs that are inverted so you can play with phasing. So uh, very useful to have that many mixers because you have so many oscillators on this thing. And then to the left of the mixer, you've got these input switches that allow you to send control signals from the keyboard or other sources to the oscillators, and that way you don't have to patch them in. So uh, there are input jacks on the back for one, two, three, and four. And basically, uh, on this particular setup, I have a keyboard doing duophony on two and three. I could have another keyboard connected as well. Or I could bring something external into here and throw this switch, and then I have a depth for that. And there are four of those here, 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 and here. The next thing I have is the fixed filter bank, one of my favorite, favorite things about Moog modulars. And basically, this is a 12-band uh, fixed filter bank where each of these is bringing up a specific frequency band, and as well as a low pass and a high pass. And um, if you've seen my System 55 video, I put white noise through that and have 
have a ball with it. Um, today, Gene from Moog showed me an idea of sending the output into an attenuator and bring it back into itself and try a feedback loop into the filters. And I'm gonna try a little later in the video to create some sort of ambience with that. So I'm very excited about that. But basically, just one of my favorite tone shaping toys, especially when you put noise into it. Then you have the famous spring reverb, the 905. There's an actual spring reverb in there and a depth, pretty simple to understand. And then here you have a filter set and an attenuator. It's basically a low pass with stepped frequency cutoff ranges and then a high pass with, again, stepped frequency cutoff ranges and then an attenuator. You can put anything into it and lower the signal, whether that's an LFO or an audio signal, doesn't matter. Then you have a pair of mults where you put one thing in and three will come out. Same thing here. And then on to the next one, we have the 904B uh, voltage controlled high pass filter. You can sweep the high pass. It has a low and high range. Uh, you have your signal input, your signal output, and then three control inputs, which will sweep this knob. Over here, uh, the 904A voltage controlled low pass filter has three frequency ranges and then you can sweep within that range. It has regeneration so you can do feedback and get really awesome sounds for that. And then that also has three voltage controlled inputs, all of those mixed together. The cool thing though is the filter coupler in between. When it's on off, the high pass and the low pass act completely independently. But you can set it to be a band reject, which means that you can set the high pass and low pass in a way where signals in between don't get passed, only the highest and lowest frequencies get passed. Or you could throw it into band pass, and then the lowest frequencies and the highest frequencies aren't passed, and only a band in the middle. So some very cool things you can do with that. They have their own uh, control things for both the bandwidth and center frequency. And that was kind of the inspiration for the separation knob uh, in the Voyager, where you can actually set the, the two filters uh, spacing between each other. Then again, another set of control voltage switches that allow me to bring the keyboards or some external source to the uh, sweeping of the high pass and low pass filters. Uh, we got an envelope follower, which will take an audio signal and create a trigger output as well as a control output uh, with a short response time, a medium response time, and a long response time. Then we have random signal generators. So we have white noise coming out of two, pink noise coming out of two. And then we're down to the third block. So we have three VCAs, three voltage control amplifiers, the Moog 902s. You basically send a signal in, signal out, and then a control input. The more voltage you add, the louder it gets. You have a fixed control voltage so you can set a minimum volume. And then they have a switch for both linear and exponential reaction to that control input. And then you have your 933. This is another one of those shortcut things where you can choose where triggers are coming from and where they're going to. You have three envelope generators here. And in the old school fashion, um, it's attack, decay, release, and then at the bottom you do your sustain level. And uh, those go from very short two milliseconds all the way up to 10 seconds for all three of them. And then you have from min to max on your sustain. And then in between you have the 911A dual trigger delay and it allows you to have a delay time from when the trigger comes in to when the trigger goes back out. And that way you can have something that goes pating if you want on a, on a pair of envelopes. Uh, you can have something happen and then a second sound happens slightly after that. Um, you can also put them in parallel or series so that they can work individually or you can have the delay time of this then go into the delay time of that for even more delay time. And then this one's pretty neat. This is a four channel mixer. So each of these inputs you can choose whether they go to A, B, C, or D in any amount. And then for each A, B, C, and D, you've also got a bass, a treble, and a master level for all four A, B, C, D. So it could be for a quad, a pair of stereo, or four unique signal paths. And then down here, you've got control outputs and trigger outputs for one, two, and three. Now, this is the Moog Sequencer Complement B. It's a portable sequencer in that it has the lid and the Tolex, just like this 3P. It's not part of the 3P, but it plays so well with it that I wanted to include it in this video. And basically it's a sequencer that has eight steps and you can have three different voltages per step or 
you can set it up using these sequential switches that every time it gets to the end, it jumps to the next row. So you actually could have 24 steps if you wanted, and there's two of them. So you could really have 48 steps if you wanted, uh, or separate, you could have six separate voltages per step or however you want to do it. And the way they work is you choose a range, either times one, times two, or times four, which determines how far these knobs throw voltage. And then you can stop. So right now I'm sequencing, but I can stop that. And when you're tuning these, you can use these set buttons to stop at one of the steps. And then you could either make your chord, or if you're doing them in sequence, you can do the first eight, then the second eight, and the third eight. Um, but, but you use these times one, times two, and times four to set how wide these knobs uh, throw voltage. So you can either have a very small amount for easy to tune, or you can have extremes, whichever one you want. And these knobs down here will let you either skip a step, so I can, I can skip any step I want, and you'll see it jumps, or I can stop at any point, and it'll just freeze right there. And, and then I can keep going simply by throwing a switch, and another cool thing is the third row, if I want, I can throw the switch here, and now the third row sets the timing for each thing. So I can actually have rhythms based on where the third row is. And then I have a range for this, which can go all the way up into audible speeds, which is very, very cool. Down below, I have uh, the 961 interface that allows me to bring V triggers in. I can have an S trigger out. I have one that, that does audio in and creates a V trig out. Um, I have the sequencer switches, which let you pick which of the three rows you're listening to. And by setting things out from here into those, you can actually switch as you go through the sequences. So very powerful there. So on some of these demonstrations, I'll be using the Moog 953 dual polyphonic keyboard. And basically, it lets me control two separate uh, control voltages. Uh, the low note sends one out and the high note sends one out. And I can actually send both control voltages and trigger information independent. And I'll be also be using the sequencer to, to trigger different notes. And in some of the examples, I'll be using actual oscillators to control uh, the pitch of some of the notes as well. And then for some of the demonstrations where I really want a nice ping pong delay, I'm using the source audio nemesis delay in ping pong mode. You'll know it's on when you see that green light. Any other time, it's off.
I've run out of time, but I hope you enjoyed the little Moog vignettes that I created. And if you have any further questions about any of the Moog products, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.